Hello everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. We're still in the midst of this lovely weather. Um, hello everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. We still have... Hello everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. We're still in the midst of a heat wave and while cooking might seem an odd thing to do, um, going out is actually worse than staying in because our flat is nice and cool. So, or relatively cool. Today I am tackling a recipe called cauliflower and potato curry from the Deliciously Ella cookbook. I've done quite a lot of prep beforehand today. Um, I'm getting hopefully a bit more proficient at these videos. So without further ado, I'll take you in. Apologies for the, for the, uh... Right, apologies again for the weird angle. At the moment, the only way I can see of getting myself and the ingredients in is to put the camera up there. Um, I guess if I had a, um, a workstation to prepare the food on that I could put the camera the other side of, I wouldn't have this problem, but as it is, <clears throat> uh, so in this recipe I've halved all of the ingredients and because last time um, I made a bit of a, a mess of things by halving only some of the ingredients and then um, and, and forgetting to halve all of them this time I've written in my deliciously Ella cookbook the exact quantities and so bear in mind that everything I have here in the real recipe, there's double of it. So the half ingredients are 12 shot... My God, my God, my God. So the halved ingredients are 12 Charlotte potatoes, <clears throat> which I have boiling, cut into bite-sized chunks, half a head of cauliflower, 600 grams of tinned tomatoes, I'm so sorry, one minute. Okay, so the halved ingredients are 12 charlotte potatoes cut into bite-sized pieces, which I already have boiling, half a head of cauliflower, 600 grams of tinned tomatoes, 200 millilitres of coconut milk, one and a half cloves of garlic, peeled and crushed. Well, I have my garlic puree, which I've been using throughout this recipe, these recipes one and a half tablespoons of mustard seeds. Well, I don't have mustard seeds, so I just used English mustard. Um, one and a half tablespoons of ground turmeric, which is the orangey one. One and a half tablespoons of ground cumin. Well, again, I don't have ground cumin, but I do have cumin seeds and one and a half tablespoons of ground ginger, which is here. I don't have ground ginger, I just chopped up fresh ginger. And one jalapeno pepper chopped finely, which is here. Then olive oil, one bag of spinach, which is half a bag of spinach um, because I'm halving everything, and brown rice and salt and pepper. Okay, so the potatoes have been softening for about 15 minutes in boiling water. I'm now going to drain them, returning the saucepan to the heat. I've already chopped them into, into bite-sized pieces. I'm going to return the potatoes to the saucepan. I'm so sorry about the cooker. I think this kind of on the blink. It's one of these very newfangled cookers. And, oh, honestly, maybe if I turn it off and on again. I hate this cooker. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, hang on. Okay, the cooker doesn't want me to make this video. Okay, so you return the partially boiled potatoes to the pan. You chop the cauliflower into chunks, small chunks, and um, I found a kind of nifty way of chopping things, which is to do it on a napkin or a tea towel. And it just helps kind of 
especially if you're chopping finely, it helps to keep rearranging the stuff into a little pile. But also it helps to transfer things. For instance, if this was on the chopping board now, I'd have all this mess to try and get into the saucepan as well. Along with that, I put in my 600 grams of tinned tomatoes. And the coconut milk, which in this case is 200 milliliters because I'm halving it. Sorry, because I'm halving it everything. I think I better turn that down a wee bit. And give it a little stir. Okay, so now my potatoes, cauliflower, tin tomatoes and coconut milk are cooking in the saucepan. I have a frying pan here that's been heating up. Ella said to put olive oil in, but I thought it might be nice to cook with some coconut oil um, to get a really coconutty flavour in the curry. So I have some hot coconut oil and to that, I'll just bring you, to that I'm going to add my garlic, my mustard, my cumin, my ginger, my salt and pepper, and my jalapeno pepper. So all the seasoning. Nice and simple. Swirl it around in the oil a little bit. It's beginning to smell very curryish now, which is nice. Ella says to cover everything in a generous amount of olive oil, but I thought it might be nice to use coconut oil again. Give it another stir. She says until the mustard seeds begin to pop. Well, I don't have mustard seeds, but I'm going to keep an eye on it and keep smelling it to see when it seems to when it seems to smell like I should turn it down. Then when this flavouring has cooked for a little while. I transfer it to the saucepan with the vegetables. I cook this for 45 minutes on, on a low heat, just so that it's simmering. 45 minutes to an hour, actually, she says. But because we have half the quantity, I think um, 45 minutes should be more than enough. And can you imagine if I'd done the full quantity? I just want to show you. That's half the quantity of vegetables in a normal size saucepan. So I'd have had to have a, a cauldron, pretty much. Let me turn that down a bit. And I'm going to re reduce the heat. Now, it really does look very curryish. I've never made curry before from scratch. So I'm okay, so an hour later, my vegetable mix has nicely reduced, gone kind of fluffy, amalgamated a little bit. I'm going to put the spinach on top of it to wilt and then in five minutes I'm going to serve it on top of some brown rice. So I found a solution to the weird camera angle. I'm sitting on a little stool. You can see me and you can see my food. And this is the beautifully colourful potato and cauliflower curry which on, on the rice with the lovely green spinach and I'm now going to try some. amazing it's really really good if anything I just make it a little bit more savory with some salt or um, I guess you could put uh, tahini or peanut butter in um, I'm learning these new substitutes to make things savory and have that kind of not mm, have that kind of consistency which we associate with satisfying food the sort of foods like cheese and cream um, the same taste buds and the same um, part of our palate that likes that consistency can be achieved through other means. So again, this is a very, very winning dish from Deliciously Ella.